What's going on? My malicious intent back here with a pure cosmic deck profile. Um, this time I didn't play at my locals. I went to a different locals. I was visiting my parents out of town and um, where I grew up, went to high school, things of that nature. I played a tournament out there, out Oshawa way. So um, I walked in and I was playing pure cosmos with my new build. Um, this is post ban list. We, we played new ban list. Um, the only real hit I took to the ban list was a uh, my gold sark, I like playing it at two. I played it at two in my last build, um, and it it was it was a lot more consistent last tournament when I split first second with this deck than it was when I split first second with Sky Strikers. Um, so here it is, my third place Cosmic deck profile. Um, just a quick recap: round one, I lost game one and three to Thunder Dragons, so I won game two. Because uh, I opened uh, against Thunder Dragons, I opened one of my three copies of Sidon in a D-Barrier, D and it was uh, I stopped them pretty well since they only have now uh, one Brilliant Fusion. And uh, Altergeist, I won uh, in round two. I won both games one and two. Altergeist in round three. I lost game one, and then with my side decking, I guess, I won games two and three. Um, against round four, I played Sky Strikers. I won game one. I lost game two. Didn't see any side deck cards at all. And then I won game three because I opened uh, Anti-Spell Fragrance and Shared Ride on top of the fact that I main deck a really main card in this build. It was fun just to try it in the new format. Uh, top four, I played Sky Strikers. I lost game one and two. I saw um, one Anti-Spell Fragrance game two, but it wasn't enough to slow my opponent down. And when I played for third against Thunder Dragons, this was a game one loss and then a game two and three win. Because I opened up game three, a deep barrier, and I also hit them with a few other well-timed, I guess, cards. Well-timed Call by the Grave was good against them as well um, in that play for third. Um, so here's the build I played now that I've gone through that tournament, I guess, run through. I run three in this build, Dark Destroyer. Two, uh, Forerunner. I do end up running to that Forerunner, running the need to use that second Forerunner a lot. I know a lot of decks play one Forerunner, but I prefer the two. Uh, I prefer it to be dark as well, but <laughs> I prefer the two. Um, two Slip Riders, not a big fan of three. I feel you brick that, uh, that much more when you play three Slip Riders. But again, if, you, if I was playing one Forerunner, I might try three Slip Riders. But I liked two and two. Cousin Dark Lady at one. One Cosmo Farm Girl. One Cosmo Straw Man. I'm not going to get into the effects because you all should know Cosmos by now. If you don't, um, just quickly, Untargetable destroys a card when it's summoned. Uh, Forerunner is Untargetable, gains a thousand life points in my phase. Bust a spell trap. Pay a thousand and negate effects once per turn. Farm Girl pays 500 when it does battle damage to search a Cosmo card from the deck, add it to hand, and Straw Man will special summon a Banished. And then, last but not least, I play three copies of the Tin Can. And that just adds, that f fuels the Call of the Haunteds for the Graveyard that you're about to see. Um, it feels another few good plays I like. And in late game, I actually found myself late game not only using Cosmo Tin Can for a tribute for Wing Karibo, um, twice, like the initial one, like if I got a late game, like maybe five turns in, something like that, like five of my own turns in, so turn 10 of the duel, I would get like a Tin Can at that point, I would just normal summon it and tribute it off for the Link Karibo, and sometimes that Link Karibo would actually come out a second time if I did get into a late game third Tin Can. So I like Tin Can for obviously its add powers and that Link Karibo play is pretty good. And my secret tech, which was super fun, Boa Baboon. Um, it really helps, especially since Dark Destroyer can destroy Boa Baboon itself, it really helps turn dead hands into live hands or fuels a shuffle with the Cosmotown 
um, things like that. Like it's, it's really good. It does a lot of work, I find, in this deck. Um, onto the spells. I play three Cosmotown, and because I always want to see that, like turn one, turn two, I play two Terraforming. Uh, I'm not playing the um, build that I really don't like, the set rotation with Fire King Island. Like I'm not a big fan of that. I tried it out um, when I first built this five or six months ago. Um, when when Dark Shore was at one at the time, that's when I decided to build it, and it hit three. So lucky me, um, which was awesome. But yeah, I really didn't, don't like that build. I tried it for a couple turns, didn't really succeed with it. One Gold Sark again. It was hit on the ban list. I had two in my last build, which did well. Two cards of mine. Now, my, in my last video, um, I got a couple of dislikes, probably because of this. But I said I don't like card demise at three in that build specifically. I actually really liked it in this build, especially with the Boa Baboon, um, to normal summon that, to get the draw, to put a monster back, to then play card, to then set the spell trap that I just got off Boa Baboon, that would have been a monster otherwise, I possibly would have had it discarded in the end phase, most likely would have had it discarded in the end phase. So that Boa Baboon did a lot of work with card demise to the fact that in this build, I wish I had a third. Um, to Allure Darkness, I, I sometimes draw the second one dead, um, one time drawing, top decking, I guess, almost, an Allure Darkness, almost top decking, I had like two cards controlled on the field, nothing in hand, and I drew into Allure Darkness, and that cost me the game, so, like, the odd time, the second one is kind of harsh, but when you have Cosmo Town up, and a Dark Destroyer in the graveyard, it's great, um, if you end up with two Boa Baboons in your hand, you can easily banish one, and for the draw two of Allure Darkness, um, if you didn't, if you really didn't have the chance, like in that scenario, you would just go normal summon one of the Boa Baboons, put the other Boa Baboon to the bottom of the deck. But sometimes that's not the answer. And Allure Darkness for one of those Boa Baboons was good. Sometimes the only Boa Baboon in hand was still two in deck. Sometimes you still want Allure of Darkness, and it's still a good play. One up start. Um, when Pot of Indulgence. I guess more or less because it's available. I know it's out now because it was just a sneak peek this weekend. Um, I didn't get a chance to go to it. I had to work all weekend, unfortunately. I really wanted a shot at that and a shot at the mat um, for the set for Savage Strike. But um, that Upstart Goblin is obviously going to be one pot of indulgence. I might also make one for one, which I saw a few times in the tournament, and I drew it dead once as well. I would also like to see that a pot of indulgence. If I played a third... I'd make the reasoning I have main deck a pot of indulgence if I played three. I don't think I will because I also played the card of demise and I played the lure darkness, which I could drop to one allure for a third pot of indulgence as well because obviously I don't use my extra deck that often. Um, but I don't know. It, it's a hard sell for me at three pot of indulgence when you have to play it at the start of your turn, I believe, and you also can't play other draw cards that turn, which means I also can't get the draw effect off of Cosmotown if I've already, if I've played Pot of Indulgence that turn. If I draw into two dead Cosmo big ships, I can't shuffle them, I can't mulligan them with the Cosmotown, with the draw effect. So uh, that's why I don't think I'm going to play three um, Pot of Indulgence, just because I can't utilize Cosmotown to the best of its ability, um, which is a tank card, obviously, in Cosmos. Um, so it may just be reasoning remains in because of the no additional draw effects drawback upstart would be one and one for one would most likely be one unless I decided to keep one for one in and reasoning would be the second pot of indulgence. Um, I played scapegoat and Italy. Scapegoat is mainly for my one extra deck play that I always get off with it, say you're just Skull Dread, or the less often used Boral Sower Dragon. Uh, sorry, Boral Low Dragon. If I had a Boral Sword, I'd probably use that more often than the Sarayuja, but I don't. Uh, so the Boral Low Dragon is my secondary play with the Scapegoat, but my main one is Sarayuja to mulligan those hands to um, set up next plays, especially with the Boa Baboon and Sarayuja. That's a really good combo. Um, I don't know. There's... There's two plays I make with that, but I'll show you when I show, reveal the extra deck as well. I don't think the extra deck had changed from more than one card, I think, from the last video I posted. I tested this, one limited removal. I know it just went to three. I decided to take that opportunity to see if I like playing one. It was alright. 
obviously I got some Dark Destroyer 6Ks. Um, my my most, I, I think the one I like the most is making the, uh, what's it called, the Slip Rider, sorry. The Slip Rider a 46 because I, like, I'm getting rid of the Dark Destroyer when I make that play. I'd rather that be something else like Storing Mirror Force or some other way that I had to use to keep uh, Dark Destroyer alive. Or maybe call the Haunted face down and I don't banish that Dark Destroyer. And I just bring it back and destroy the monster that destroyed it. Something like that. So I didn't want to play three living removals because there's already answers in this deck to scenarios where Dark Destroyer is not the answer or where a single Dark Destroyer play is not the answer. So one limiter, and I liked it. I might uh, keep playing one, maybe even go up to two going forward. Um, I unfortunately, when uh, maybe three months ago in a big trade, I got an engine because I wanted to try Cosmo uh, True Draco. And I got an engine. Part of the trade for the engine was getting rid of one of my parallel limiter removals, like Hobby League. So that one's Hobby League, but I just recently traded away the other one. And now, obviously, when I want to kind of possibly test two, I have to get like a super rare, which I, I wouldn't mind the super rare original first edition. But, you know, the Hobby League rare was something special, I guess. Hard to get. Um, unless you buy it online. Two Cosmojos as the traps. Three Call the Hunters. Um, I like Call the Hunters way better than Back to the Front. I know a lot of people say use Back to the Front. Um, I would use Back to the Front in a Trap Tricks build. So a Trap Trick build. But I wouldn't I wouldn't go Call the Haunted. Sorry, I wouldn't go Trap. Sorry, I ah, can't even speak now. I wouldn't go Back to the Front over Call the Haunted without Trap Trick being a main staple trap in that deck. Um... Storm Mirror Force wasn't as as MVP as it was in my first second split tournament from the last video. Um, it was still pretty good. I still got rid of uh, two Thunder Dragon fusions with that Storm Mirror Force, which was nice. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'd use it again going forward, just because it wasn't like it had a big impact on that on that round one thunder dragons my one win it had a big impact on that game and that's it and then my secret tech which i loved as well with the boa baboons i can't i can't decide if i like the boa baboons or the mistakes better but like normal summoning a boa baboon to put a monster like a ship to the bottom of your deck and then you card of demise and draw into a mistake when you just hit a boa baboon plus two mulligan draws coming most likely unless it just gets banished or bounced that boa baboon so like there's so many good plays and good combos this deck can come out with and good um, boards that are hard to break with those call of haunted the dark destroyers and the mistake but uh, those boa baboons i would say probably mvp of the tournament just because so many wasted awful hands became playable and allowed me to survive three or four more turns in some cases changing the entire duel around and uh, resulting in a win when i had a dead open hand with one boa baboon in it so i don't know it's a great card in this build i'm gonna try and keep that card in here when i bring in the pot of indulgences again that's another draw effect that can't go off when you play pot of indulgence so but Again, that's really dependent on your opponent destroying Boa Baboon on your own turn when it's summoned. Like, sorry, yeah, like for those extra two draws, I mean, not for the initial draw. So, I, I don't know, it's, it's going to be hard to incorporate that, the Boa Baboon and the Pot of Indulgence in the deck at the same time, but I'm going to try. Alright, uh, that was everything in the main deck. Now, quickly, I'll just run through this because we're going up on 15 minutes now. I'm just going to quickly run... Through the extra deck again, Boros Sword, Seri just Skull Dread. That's usually, actually, I would say 100% of the time, made only with Scapegoats and Link Spider and Nightmare Phoenix. If I don't have the hand uh, discard, like the discard from hand for the Nightmare Phoenix, or my opponent doesn't have the spell trap that I want to destroy, I'll just use the Proxy Dragon. Or if the left Link Zone, extra zone, is taken up then I can't use Nightmare Phoenix. I have to go with the Project Dragon in the right Link Zone. And Link Karibo. Then the deck also makes, rarely, Cybernova, Cyber Infinity, 
Severin and Dragon, if they destroy the Nova before the Infinity hits the field. Um, a lot of this was made. A lot of this was made. This is probably another next to Boa Baboon. Um, and Mistake, probably the third best consistent card in here. Especially the most, most likely the most consistent card in the extra deck for the tournament was Phantom Knights of Breaksword. And again, I would always get Boa Baboon Normal Summon. My opponent would do something to take down the first one, getting the other two out. I would protect them with another play. Maybe a Call of the Haunted of a Dark Destroyer. Maybe a Storming Mirror Force. Whatever I'd protect them with. And then I'd make a Phantom Knights with the two Boa Baboons. So they're, they're really clutch. Then we got Levio the Sea Dragon. Playdays, Volcasaurus. Gaia Dragon, and the far less used Cypher Omega, and the side deck just to finish this video off. Two Ash Blossoms, two Joel Locks, two Shared Ride, two Caught by the Grave, double Twin Twister, double Anti Spell Fragrance, and because it's my worst matchup and I'm most scared of Thunder Dragons, three Dimensional Barriers. Alright? Thanks for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell only your Yu-Gi-Oh friends. And I'll see you next time.